this first half looks to be the Western Outlaws. 27, 15 points over the War Chiefs at the end of the second skating period. Halftime in tonight's game with the score, the Eastern War Chiefs 12 and the Western Outlaws 27. Now, earlier today, Big John Bristol blew the whistle on Chief Prosecutor Earl Garns and Georgia Haas. And it's going to be interesting to hear what the special comments are going to be from the guests I've asked to join me. First of all, from the Eastern War Chiefs, I have Richard Brown and also Vicki McEwen. Vicki, what do you think about what happened today with John Bristol? Oh, I thought it was great. He certainly put Garns and Georgia Haas on the spot. It's about time somebody did. Richard, what do you think about this? We always knew her days were limited. As we all know that she belongs on the T-Bird teams, and that's exactly where she's going back. We want her on the T-Bird team because we want them at full strength when they come up to the Olympic and when they come back into our territory. And that's what we're going to have. She, her days are numbered. She may as well just go home back to wherever she came from. Uh-oh. Well, we've got Georgia Haas, E.G. Pretty Boy Miller, and Randy Whitman over here. I'll tell you what. What do you think about this, Randy? I'm going to ask you first. Well, Paul, I think uh, Big John Bristol is great. And me and Ralph are going to be back at the Olympic Auditorium in two weeks to skate as T-Bird. No way. Yes, we are. No well, way, no way. You better think Pretty Boy you. Miller, he disagrees. What about you, uh, Georgia Haas? Please, you better think again, because she's my property. She's going to stay my property. And there's no way she's going anywhere no. with anybody here. Now, get out of here. You have work Georgia to do. You may as well go, go back That's to Georgia, right. because her days are Wait a minute. And EG, you, you don't Wait a minute. Days. I'm just an innocent bystander. Georgia Haas seems pretty sure of herself. Maybe she knows something that we don't know. We'll find out a little bit later, but right now we'll be right back with the second half of tonight's game right after these messages. After a little halftime revelry, we're back here in the third skating period. Outlaws Look at that le score, Ted. Leading the War Chiefs 31 to 12. It looks like the War Chiefs are completely out of it here. The War Chiefs are a powerful team, and I, it's, it's hard for me to believe they could be trailing like this. The outlaws have just, they've hammered up from pillar to post. Well, you know that the, the uh, War Chiefs had trouble getting in here. They might be suffering a little bit of jet lag, but I think th they're a much better team in this, Ted. I, I, I can't see what's really going on. Vicki McEwen is going out. She's going to try to do something about it. There's that outlaw jammer right behind it. She's just determined Randy Whitman. Vicki McEwen going out against Randy Whitman. It should be interesting to see how she holds up after all that happens. Whitman doing a good job for the Western Outlaws. E.G. Miller applauding. As she does a good job there. Goes blows by for two quick points. Boy, powerful skating. Dangerous move, though. She could have hurt that skater. She, she got away with it. Another She's picked up four. points. Randy Whitman really doing the job here for the Outlaws. She wants Vicki McEwen. Vicki's waiting for her up there, and I think... Oh, she's got Vicki McEwen horse collar. Look out, ready to E.G. Miller. Somebody ought to get over there and get a hold of that man. E.G. Miller just squeezed the life out of poor Vicky McEwen. She's still trying to get her breath back. Well, the Outlaws got four big points on that. Did you believe they got a 24-point lead with five minutes to go in his third and important period? Miller's after him again. Look at Georgia Haas up there. She's got a grin inside a mile wide because she likes what's going on out here. She's getting even with Richard Brown for snubbing her. Watch this replay. Randy Whitman. Whitman gets her. Now, she, Whitman knows exactly what she's doing. And I guarantee you, she didn't do that when she was on the T-Birds. But look at Vicki McEwen. She's at the mercy of that man. And he's trying to crush every rip she's got. Look at Georgia Hans over there to the side. Unbelievable. He may have just done a good job on this. We see one of these enthusiastic fans here in the San Diego Sports Arena. War Chief girls need some help from the men. The men ought to keep an eye on the girls and protect them. They can really good skaters here. Look at this. A four-girl whip. Tommy Whip. Steffi is coming out on the back of that one skate, trying to get the other one down. Hang on, Vicky. Oh, a little oh. tap. A little <laughs> tap from Lynn Coggleton. And Vicky Boy, did that freeze down. this crowd. Nice, nice move. That was almost comical. I don't think Vicky Steffi think it's very funny, but 
Lynn Congerman took got the advantage there. She's coming around to the rear of the pack. Steffi was lucky because if Lynn had really drove her, Steffi had got hurt. And otherwise, she just went down on her wallet there and got back up. Big block by Vicki Steffi at the rear of the pack. Turnabout's fair play. I don't think she's too pleased. I think she's going to try to take everything out on Lynn Congerman. I think Lynn's playing possum here. Look at her get up on the bank. She's just trying to outbox. Skaters in front of it. Vicki Steffi's tough to fool, but double hammer, double block. Oh! Good nice move by those work. two skaters. Good one. Nice teamwork. And Lynn Congerman goes by on the inside and calls the jam off. Evidently, yeah, Lynn got hit pretty hard on that jam, because I know Lynn, she's got a heart as big as her whole body there. And she gave up on that jam. I think she's hurting a lot more than she wants to let anybody know. But she could have picked up a lot more points on that. Boy, that's got to be a lift for the Eastern War Chiefs. So it'll be 24 points down to pick up five quick points as we watch this replay here. Watch Steffi come. Ladies and gentlemen, this is four girls right off the top of that bank, and her body's trying to catch up with her skates. That one skate's trying to get down, and she is really at the mercy of whoever wants to take a shot at her. Look at that. Fortunately, little... <laughs> Little tap on the forehead. Woo, right that was she known, cares her money. That was known as an atomic whip. When any three or four more get up, the skaters like to call that an atomic whip. Yeah, actually, you can really double your speed with a big copper whip like that. We got two and a half minutes to go here. Western Look Outlaws lead 36 to 17. Then Tuckerman did bring him back a little closer, five points closer. As Laura Stout, number four is out for the war chief. Number 15, Tammy Villalobos. Tammy Villalobos staying on the high side as Laura Stout continuing on down low. Next across the rear of the back, the Western Outlaws have a double block. Laura Stout splits through. Yeah, oh, right through the there. Nothing but a straightforward jam there, but it worked real well. They picked up two extra points. They're blaming Whitman on there, and I didn't see anything that Whitman done. Donna Young's not saying anything about it, but wouldn't you know that Georgia Haas and E.T. Miller are taking out of Randy Whitman? I don't know what I would think if I were a coach of that girl, Jeff. Let me tell you, Fred, that good time, bad time. Right now, the War Chiefs are in trouble as far as winning this game. Nobody, I don't, right now, I don't think they can come back from a lead like this unless they get help from the girls. They only got a minute and 30 seconds to go in this critical third period of this game, and the men need all the help they can get. 36 to 19, they trail with 17 points. Number one, Vicki McEwen, she's a good one to get out there to try to get some of those back going out against number 15, Tammy Villalobos. Vicki needs to get rid of this jammer. Come in to rear the back. Up. Oh, not going to do it that way. Boy, you can see the disappointment on her face there. She you know, wanted that. She needs those points bad. They're trying hard. Let Congleman can't do anything. Georgia Haas really has control of this pack out there. There's four more points in there for that outlaw jammer. That's going to bring up to 40. But, you know, we we got a special coming up here in a few minutes. It's Georgia calls it Georgia Strikes Back. I can't imagine what she means striking back. She's been raising the heck out here for weeks now, and I don't know what more she can do to these other teams. I can't. We saw a preview of that tape, and that is just unbelievable what that woman says. Well, I can't wait for the next 40 seconds to see it. And, but right now, the War Chiefs are in a lot of trouble. I don't know of any team right now that can come back against this powerful outlaw team. Really by that. The girls, Lynn Coughlin, going to try to do something about it. If the referee's got her, they let her get away from coming out of the front of the pack on that jam. Well, when it's going bad, it's going bad. The War Chiefs are trying anything. Vicky stepped on the big block and missed completely. Get moving, Lynn. They only got 13 seconds, and well, her team's got that pack it. locked up right there. Ten seconds to go. Keep going. I think she got by just as the buzzer went off. He gave her five big four key points on that. Look at Georgia Haas. There's Georgia Haas. We got Georgia's revenge coming up. We're at the end of the third skating period. Western Outlaws lead 40 to 24 over the Eastern War Chiefs. 16 big point lead. Hi, I'm Ms. Georgia Haas. I'd like to take a few moments of your time to clarify a few missed conceptions that people have concerning myself. Now, first of all, the T-Birds have you folks totally brainwashed. They would have you believing that I am a nasty, the meanest, the most unscrupulous person that takes unfair advantage of anyone at any time. Not so, folks. I have gone by the book 
everybody knows I go by the book. And I have not been unfair in any situation in all the years that I have been in this business. That goes for the Randy and Cindy situation also. The T-Birds screwed up, totally just simply screwed up. And I am not going to take the blame for their stupidity. I am a loving, I am a caring person. And the T-Birds, I'll tell you, what they are accusing me of, it's what they do, not me. All my fans know that I tell the truth, that I am right. Look, I want to show you something. I have letters all over from the Canada, from the USA. They come to me telling me how much they love me. Georgia Hots, they love me. I am truthful and I am fair with everyone. I have a few letters here I would like to read to you. This comes from Arlington, Virginia. How could anyone dispute such a fine and splendid individual and such a charming and witty woman as Georgia Haas. It's only natural that Randy and Cindy would skate and would want to skate for the devils. One letter. I have another letter. This one comes from Shavertown, Pennsylvania. Ms. Haas therefore has the right to claim Cindy and Randy. In fact, it could only be assumed that the players and the entire Los Angeles organization are caught up in a selfish and vicious lie. It's up to the gutsy, the powerful, and the brilliant leader, such as Ms. Georgia Haas, to clean up the corruption and the favoritism in the sports world today. Ms. Haas is a woman of integrity. And you better believe it, she is. Look at the men. We've got the fourth skating period underway here. Eastern War Chiefs trail the Western Outlaws by a ton. 40 to 24, they're 16 points down. We've got Harold Jackson, number 17, out on the jam for the Western Outlaws. And it looks like number one, your man and mine, Billy Bob Bibbis, out for the Eastern War Chiefs. Richard Brown and his team's keeping Harold Jackson back in there. Harold's the only, he's a designated scorer on this jam, and he's the only one on his team that can score. And they're not letting him out of that pack. Jackson is trying everything he can. In the meantime, there's that War Chief Jammer in that blue and gold uniform. He's the only one that's approaching the back of that pack. Billy Bob. Richard Brown needs the points. Billy Bob coming up to the rear of the pack. Harold Jackson at the rear. Looks like Leo Quigley's back to assist. And Richard Brown, right out of camera range, is coming up to assist. Harold, oh, what a... I haven't seen a block like that in ages. He just flipped his feet out from underneath it. And nobody's given an inch there. It looks like uh, 17 sets of wheels are kicking each other. I don't understand why Don Lasso is not calling this jam off. He's been down. Hell, Jackson. Hell, just holding him there, Jess. He wants the jam called off. Laster finally calls off the jam. Jackson's got a big 16-point lead right now, and he don't want them people to score in there. Harold will do anything he can to win this game. Really, all the outlaws have to do, Jess, is play a holding game now. Well, there's only about six minutes and 40 seconds to go in this final period, and right now the outlaws got a big 16-point lead, and, and uh, they're going to have trouble getting the jammers out of there, but if, if they can just keep as war chief jammers from scoring, they've got this game locked up. It's, it's that simple. That's the way the game's played. That's right. That was an unbelievable block by Harold Jackson. A leg whip that just took the legs right out from underneath Billy Bob. Outlaws, Western Outlaws lead 40 to 24 over the Eastern War Chiefs. We thought this was going to be a closer battle than this. The War Chiefs is a powerful team, but the Outlaws have got their number and they lead by 16. War Chiefs got the jammer out first. He's got a pretty good lead on that outlaw jammer. Number three, David Aras Mendes for the Eastern War Chiefs out against Raymond Rose for the Western Outlaws. Raymond Rose is way back as Aras Mendes goes by and comes off the jam. He flew by there. They just looked away for a split second. His old man took that, took the rest of the outlaw jammer just high enough in that turn for him to get by on the bottom of that track, and he picked up four big points. That has to be a big lift for the Eastern War Chiefs. That has to really get most, most of their confidence. That's what they need at this point. This War, Chief, this War Chief is a powerful team out there. I can't imagine them trailing like this all night long, but I think they might have waited a little bit too late because they only got about five minutes and 25 seconds, and uh, still 12 points is hard to pick up against this outlaw team to where they're going. 
That's right. The Outlaws have played a tough game the entire night as we got Billy Bob Bibbis, number one in the blue and gold uniform for the Eastern War Chiefs going out. But Harold Jackson in the black up at the front of the pack. He won't let anybody out. Aris Mendes is trying to assist him out, but Harold Jackson doing a great job keeping everybody in. The referee's already blowed the whistle, so the 60-second jam period's already started. They just can't get out of the pack. Oh! Took the jam, Lee Jammer right off in there. Hit Lynn Congleton. She wasn't paying attention, and Harold Jackson took Billy Bob right into Lynn Congleton in the infield. Well, I told you at the beginning of the show that Harold Jackson's got a thing out for them. Those people look a little worried right now. They've had their way pretty much the entire night. Now things don't seem to be going their way, even though Harold Jackson got the best of Billy Bob on that last jam. I feel right now the Outlaws are playing more of a defensive game, and they've given up on that offense and kept all night long. I don't know if they may have spent the energy in some of their, you know, their more vital skaters out there. Let's get this game one. Okay. Let's do it. Let's get this game won. That's what she's trying to yep. do. I think all they're trying to do is hang on, run the clock out, and squeeze out a victory. Let's see if that strategy works. Number three, David Ars Mendez, Eastern War Chiefs. He's been a workhorse tonight for those War Chiefs. Going out against his first jam of this game, big Jerry Teal. Jerry Teal must outweigh him by 100 pounds. Ars Mendez got to get moving on there. If he can get in front of this big man. Look out. Look out. Jerry Teal just hammered him with those big ham hocks. I was going to say, he needs to outrun this man. He needs to the chain blocks. They're up in the high part of the... Oh, high part of the turn. Teal goes down hard. Aris Mendes into the infield. There's E.G. Miller. Look out. Oh, right to the face. Right to the top of the head. Right now, the oddballs have given up the call. Win, win, win. Right now, they're trying to destroy, destroy, destroy. And they don't care who they're destroying right now. But look what's happening. E.G. Miller has got the Eastern War Chiefs chasing him. The clock is and running. It, and they right. still trail by 12 points. Richard Brown. Well, Richard's probably going to take care of E.G. But he's going to lose this game right now. He's only got three minutes and ten seconds to go in a game. And they got fighters all over the place out there. Kicking, hitting. Three minutes to go. The referees can't get this back under control right now. I, right now, this is not roller derby. This looks like a car drive-in movie that's been bombed. Well, it might as well be happening in a drive-in movie because it has no part in this game right now. Look at that. All four of those War Chief skaters, that's four of their top skaters right there, fans, on their hands and knees. That looks like a dry cleaner that exploded. One. And look at this, surveying the carding. That's exactly that what she wanted to do. I think she's mad at Richard Brown. What what makes you think that? Oh, she mentioned his name mostly, but then, <laughs> let's get this game back on the road here. They've got two minutes and ten seconds to go. Even the referee's up there messing around with E.G. Miller. He ought to be forming that pack, blowing that whistle, and getting those jam Un periods started. Unbelievable. The, the War Chiefs have picked up another five points. They're only trailing by seven, but it doesn't really appear that anybody wants to skate in this game. Well, I tell you, if I was in charge of that outlaw team and I had this lead right now with a minute and 53 seconds and my jammer out of the pack, there's not a team in this league going to beat me. Well, I tell you what, it looks like they're finally getting a skate Skating jam underway here. We've got Raven Rose, 15. Good move on that outlaw skater. They're strictly going defensive right now. If they can get their jammers out first, they only got a minute, 35 seconds to go. They can just keep cutting, keep cutting. Nice delaying tactic by Raymond Rose. That's all they've been doing almost this entire period is just trying to run that clock out. The War Chiefs keep chipping away a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. Minute 20 to go. I don't think they have enough time. Well, they trail it by seven points with a minute and 17 seconds, and they better get that blue and gold jammer out of there first and to keep Harold Jackson oh. back in that pack. Richard Brown had him by the jersey and then knocked Harold Jackson down. He still can't get out of that pack. We don't have a jammer out yet. This Jackson is my kind of skater. Oh. Look at him keep going. Ernie Rodriguez tried to give him a whip, slipped and fell. Harold Jackson gets Cut it off again. The jam off. 55 seconds to go. I think that just locked up the victory. Well, the, the War Chiefs need to stop the, all the skaters on the pack on the track. Get a pack together, so it looked. And if Harold Jackson don't get in there, they ought to put him in the penalty box for stalling I and get know. this thing going with 40 seconds to go in the game. I don't know. by seven points. I think that was an incredibly smart move by Harold Jackson. I think that was the key move of the game. The Outlaws have got to have this in the bank. There's only 30 seconds to go. Billy Bob Bibbis is not giving up. He's getting out on the jam. But I just don't think there's a time left. Well, let's see if Billy Bob's got anything left, but his teammates, 
ought to stop that pack and freeze it up and let him catch it as quick as he can so he can try to score. Because I'll tell you one thing, that man seconds. in the black uniform ain't going to move. 13 seconds to go. There's not much time. Billy Bob Davis is going to go. Subway. They took right the whole high side. Raymond Rose got him held up. I don't know. This is a tough one to call. It could be anybody's game. They really did a job of coming back. Time runs out. E.G. Miller on the track where he's been all night. Fans are waiting for the verdict from the referee. We're waiting for the verdict from the referee. Pointing his finger at E.G. Miller. We still don't have a score here. E.G. Miller doesn't look pleased. I don't know. Billy Bob really was coming on strong there at the end. I don't know if he tied it Billy or took Bob, the lead. What they did on that, Ted, they gave him four points. Seven points for scoring, and actually they got E.G. Miller for interfering there. And look Unbelievable. at that! Unbelievable! 42 to 40. The War Chiefs have just beaten the Western Outlaws. What a comeback! What a comeback! Unbelievable! Forty, a surprise victory. The Eastern War Chiefs over the Western Outlaws. I tell you, it really surprised me, but it shouldn't because that War Chiefs is a powerful team out there. They had, they had skaters all over this track out here tonight, Ted, but I tell you, the War Chiefs have done something the Thunderbirds have not been able to do this year. The Thunderbirds have never beaten the 